Jesus Christ be praised. I've got some goods here whose owners might miss them. All right. Let's see what we can do about that. God be with you. Let's talk about the price. Aye. See now, I knew we'd come to an agreement.
Mother of God, you look like you've been assaulted. I'd like to make use of the bathhouse's services. And what is it you'd like? A bit of everything. Heal my wounds, have a proper bath. Oh, and my garments are in need of laundering. But of course, money first, though. I'm not giving you that much. And how much are you willing to pay? You won't regret spending the money. I guarantee it. Good luck. I'll be with you. What's happening around here? Ah, you know how it is. Always something. Especially at the mill. Not a week goes by without some ruckus there. But I'm wise to them troublemakers. Whenever they're planning some mischief, they're always over there in the corner, hatching their plots. Like yesterday, for instance. And that's not all. Now I think of it. I've not seen Kunhota here for some time. The local herb woman. She always comes here once a week for a tankard of ale. But she ain't turned up recently. I hope nothing's happened to her. And that's not all. Like that sake has started an archery contest here. If you want to try your luck at winning a few Russian, you should go and see him.
God be with you. God be with you. Can we do something about the price? Well, we can try it. Agree? That's not enough. See now, I knew we'd come to an agreement. Good morning. Is there anything I can do for you? As it happens, there is. Drahamira, a widow from Ledechko, requested my services. But it's a long way on foot. And me, with my back in such dreadful pain. I simply can't face the journey. All the way from Ledechko? What, they don't have a herbalist there? They do, but she didn't want a local. She's a rich widow, inherited a butcher shop. You know how folks like to gossip, especially about anyone who's better off than them. Do you know anything at all about exorcisms? Exorcisms? You know, banishing ghosts, smudging, spells. A haunted butcher shop. Wouldn't a day's work for me. 
It's not a task to be undertaken lightly. This is a real ghost, the spirit of a dead man who hasn't found peace. In order to banish him from the world of the living, you'll need to do a few things. Slit a black cock's neck on the poor soul's grave? What a despicable thought! No! Do you know what smudging is? You'll need ten poppies and some flowers from the deceased grave. Once you have all that, bring it to the house that's being haunted. Light it on fire, and the smoke will purge the place of any unwanted spirits. Sounds like fun. I'll help you. It's no game. It's a very serious matter. Drahomira was terrified. And these aren't forces to be meddled with lightly. Fine, fine. Is there anything else I should know? That's a question for Drahomira. You'll find her in her cottage on the very edge of Ledechko. God bless. Yeah. The herbalist Kunhuta sent me. I'm here because of the ghost. You don't look like you know a thing about ghosts. Why didn't she come herself? Why did she send someone so young instead? Do you know anything at all about exorcisms? She was in too much pain to make the journey. But you can trust me. I know what I'm doing. You'd better. Well, get to work then. There's a few things I need to know first. I'd rather you just got on with it. But I don't suppose I've got any choice, so ask. What exactly has been going on? It happens at night. Every night, now an apparition comes to me and I can't get a wink of sleep. I can't take it anymore. Whose ghost is it? His name was Alois and he had a farm not far from the Dechko. A few years ago, his farmhouse burned down with him in it. I've heard that people who die such horrible deaths seldom rest in peace. Why do you think he chose you of all people? How am I supposed to know? Maybe because we're neighbors. We grew up together as children. Hmm. I suppose that makes sense. Where is Alois buried? For the exorcism, I'll need flowers from his grave. He's laid to rest in the Sassau Cemetery by the wall. His grave is a bit overgrown with pines. I've been there a few times for a visit. The first day he appeared, I prayed at his grave, but he came again just the same. I know everything I need to know. Then for God's sake, perform the ritual as soon as possible. Goodbye.
Good day to you. Let's talk about the price. Naturally. Are we agreed? Come now, just a little more and we have a deal. Oh, that's a decent price. something troubling you? I wouldn't say it's troubling me exactly, my boy, but I've heard talk about the Sasso blacksmith and I'm losing sleep over. What talk might that be? They say they've heard him chanting when he tempers steel, and that nothing of his ever breaks. Using spells to strengthen steel? That sounds like old wives' tales to me. That's what they say. They say he was always muttering something. And if anyone catches him at it, he stops at once and gives them dirty looks. Maybe he's just praying. Well, he's getting help of some sort, whether it's prayers or something less holy. Well, if it's troubling you, go and have a look for yourself. Easy for you to say. I have too much work to do. And anyway, I can't just turn up asking questions. He wouldn't tell me anything. And, uh... How could I help with that? Simple enough. Go there and find out if there's any grain of truth in it. I suppose asking costs nothing. Just don't ask him outright about any sorcery. Don't worry, I'm not that daft. Good, good. And don't worry, you won't be the poorer for it. Once you find out what's what, I'll find a way to recompense you. All right, I'll go and see if there's anything to the stories. Good, but be subtle about it. Don't go embarrassing yourself, or me. God.
I never. <laughs> Found it. Now to pick the flowers. mustard and bacon. My breath is short, my feet are sore, I buy a horse, but I am poor. The sun may burn, the sun may shine, but you not with a darling mine. Now, for the last time. The sun, he hides behind a cloud, his heat goes cold and his fire goes loud. He drowned the fish and broke its neck. Threw it down upon the deck. Fry your fish to the best, fishy thighs and fishy breasts. Jesus Christ be praised. I've heard it said that you're a warlock. What? Why the fuck would they say that? They say when you temper steel, you chant spells, and then nothing of yours ever breaks. Spells? <laughs> That's a good one. It's no spell. Just a rhyme to time myself so I don't hold the steel hair too long. They say you're the best blacksmith in the whole region. That metal you've tempered never breaks. Ha! Ah. Nothing but old wives' tales. Of course, some of my pieces are broken, but only ever here at the smithy. No one's ever returned anything for you to rework, though, have they? Not that I recall, but I can't remember everything. Father was a blacksmith all my life. He always stoked up the furnace till it roared gently, and you could smell the heated iron. Then you plunged it into the water, and that was that. What gently humming furnace are you on about? Have you ever actually been near one? You'd end up drenched with sweat, though. I'd like to ask you... And I'd say I've... Look. So it's a... Act. Let's stop. Good luck to you.
My breath is short, my feet are sore, I buy a horse, but I am poor. The sun may burn, the sun may shine, but you will not live as I am mine. Now, for the last time. The sun, he hides behind a cloud, his heat goes cold and his fire goes loud. He drowned the fish and broke its neck, to lay down upon the deck. Fry your fish, the fish heads best, fishy thighs and fishy breast. So, from the beginning, the sun sets out across the skies, he loses his way to the forge he flies. Kuttenberg is far, far away, Kuttenberg is far, here I'll stay. My breath is short, my feet are sore, I'd buy a horse but I am poor. The sun may burn, the sun may shine, but you will not wither, darling mine. Now, for the last time. The sun, he hides behind a cloud. His heat goes cold, his fire goes loud. He drowned the fish and broke his neck, so he down the deck. Try your fish, the fish heads best, fishy thighs and fishy breasts.
quite hungry. I'm hungry. <coughs> I'm back with the incense. Can we begin? Good. Let's go to the cross in the bedroom. Well, what are you waiting for? Uh, I feel a bit out of my depth. This is my first time. <laughs> now you tell me. Well, get started. You've got the flowers, so it has to work. <coughs> Pater Noster Quiest Incarnis Sanctificator Omen Tuum. Are you sure you're saying that right? Shh! You mustn't be interrupted. In nominate parties et filius et spirits etc. Ave Maria Gratia Plenty Dominatrix Tecum. Glory be to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. O Lord, may he rest in eternal peace, and may eternal light guide his way. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Please, God, I can finally sleep in peace at night. Come by tomorrow to see if it worked. God be with you. Master Blacksmith, I think I know how the tempering gets done in Sasau. And what have you found out? 
Don't keep me on tenterhooks. Out with it. That chant of his is a sort of nursery rhyme. He uses it to time his heating and quenching. Well, there we are. I thought those rumours about casting spells were a load of nonsense. And you recall this little rhyme of his? Maybe, but that's not all. He heats the metal twice. Twice? Why would he do that? You'll have to ask him that. But the second time it didn't hiss, although he heated it. And that rhyme of his, it went something like this. The sun sets out across the skies. He loses his way to the forge he flies. That sounds like the start of something. Kuttenberg is far, far away. Kuttenberg is far. Here I'll stay. And um, two and um, three. Uh, my breath is short. My feet are sore. I'd buy a horse, but I am poor. Yes, that would be about it. The sun may burn, the sun may shine, but you'll not wither, darling mine. And seven. That was the first part. Now the second. The sun he hides behind a cloud. His heat goes cold and his fire goes out. And that's how the second part begins, is it? He drowned the fish and broke its neck. Threw it down upon the deck. Hmm. Fry your fish, the fish head's best. Fishy thighs and fishy breast. And four and five. And that's all. That's the way it went. Right. The first part long and the second shorter nearly by half. I'll have to try it out. Here's your reward, and if you're in need of a job... I'll give it some thought, Master Blacksmith. God be with you. God be with you. What's with the targets? Are you an archer by any chance? I notice you're asking questions. Are you the Inquisition by any chance? No, I'm Henry of Scalitz. From Scalitz? I'm Vatek from here. Why are you so curious about the targets? It's just that I sometimes try my hand at archery too. Try your hand, do you? <laughs> I know plenty who do. When you can score as high as me at chumps, then I might be impressed. I've got no idea what you're talking about. Never played chumps? And you call yourself an archer? All right, Henry, listen up. Chumps is a game for real archers. It tests your strength, stamina, and accuracy. And it can be a nice little earner. Unless you're, well, a chump. So what exactly is it? I'll tell you. A bunch of logs are floated down the river. Then you count to 20, and the archers run along the banks after the logs. At the end of the course, someone collects all the logs and counts the strikes. Whoever has the most, always meaning me, wins the bout. Each archer has 20 arrows with their own colored fletching, and the contest ends when the last log floats through the finish line. Sounds like good fun. Fun? My friend, it will bring you out in a proper sweat, and you'll be well pleased to hit just one or two blocks. So how about it then? Fancy about. You'll need your own bow, but I'll supply the arrows with coloured fletching. 
I do. Come on, then. Ah, one more chump. Excellent. Now you'll have to bet at least ten groschen, fifty at most. There'll be three archers competing at the time. The winner gets triple his wager and the second gets his coin back. So how much will you bet? I won't overdo it. That's the betting over with. Now here are your arrows. Take care now. And now! I'll see you at the finish. Ah, well, I won't miss the next one. See you. Almost had it. Bloody hell, the wind took it. Bloody hell, the wind took it. I won't miss the next one. Got it! You've no chance against me, amateurs. Another on target. See you beat that. Almost had You have no chance against me, Abigail. Let's see you beat that. Time's up, Damn. folks. Missed. One last arrow, and that's it. Against me, amateurs. So, how did it go? You came last, lad. But chin up. As soon as you make some money, you can stop by here again and lose it all. Good luck to you.
Good day to you. Can I sleep here? Certainly. For how long? Just the one night. All right. Money up front, though. Here you are. You'll like it here. Like sleeping on a cloud, it is. Where do I go to sleep? That's easy. As soon as you go indoors, at the end of the room on the left, there's a door leading to the chamber. Everything's prepared for you there. Take care now. So, did it work? Is your home free of the ghost? Oh, you're here, are you? You're lucky I didn't have to get you myself. No, it didn't work. The spirit came just the same as before, and I didn't sleep a wink. So you're saying I won't get my reward? You get paid for results, my dear, and I haven't seen any yet. At least now I know that old wives' love doesn't help. Go and see Apothecary Koniash in Ratai. I hear he's familiar with all manner of magic. Fine. I'll go and see the apothecary. Hopefully we'll come up with something that works. <laughs> 